this video, we're going to talk about the Bloomin' Sprouts of Copper Sulfate, or CuSO4 here. This is better known as the Chemical Garden. Some information about this. This reaction was first discovered in 1640. It's been around a long time. And for years, you could buy a toy called Magic Rocks. They discontinued it, and I recently found they restarted selling this. So you can buy this as a toy now. This reaction is known as a chemical and mechanical reaction, and I'll show you here as follows. First, the reaction uh, equation here. The copper sulfate is reacting with sodium silicate, yielding copper silicate and sodium sulfate. Copper silicate is a solid that forms within the reaction as it's actually going on. Forming the copper silicate solid is the chemical part of this reaction. The mechanical part is as follows, and try to follow me as I attempt to make this uh, explanation here. As the copper sulfate dissolves, it's dissolved into the water surrounding it. And in that water is the sodium silicate. And when the copper sulfate in solution meets the sodium silicate, it forms the copper silicate. And that's this green around here. The black is the sodium silicate coming in as the copper sulfate comes out. And where they meet, they form a barrier, a solid barrier, but it is semi-permeable. Semi-permeability allows water to leak through back into the inside of here. And because this is a solid all the way around it and water is leaking into it, eventually pressure builds up inside of here and the wall breaks open. So the copper silicate wall breaks open. And when that happens, it releases fresh copper sulfate solution here, which leaks through and then it bumps into the sodium silicate and forms another wall of copper silicate. And then the same thing happens again. Water leaks through slowly, builds up the pressure and the copper silicate wall breaks again, allowing fresh copper sulfate to come through and it bumps into the sodium silicate again and forms another wall of copper silicate and the water leaks through and breaks it open. And as this happens, this appears to grow, but really it's just the breakages along this whole path that allow it to look like it's growing. As a reference, the copper silicate and the water are in blue here. The sodium silicate is in black. The copper silicate is in green and the breaking the wall of the copper silicate is in the red. Back to our materials here. We need the silicon dioxide, the SiO2, which is the cat litter, 60 grams. We need sodium hydroxide, 30 grams. We need water, and I wrote down 100 milliliters and 800 milliliters. So you need 900 total, but it's going to be separated into two amounts, 100 and 800 milliliters. And we need the copper sulfate, CuSO4. You want chunks. You don't want powders or just broken little bits. You could do that, but the reaction is not going to really work that well. You want a good chunk, at least a centimeter in diameter, if you can do it. Well, I ran out of room, so the method is really crammed into the bottom here. But this is how it goes. First, your cat litter or your crystal cat litter here, sodium silicate goes in, mixed with the sodium hydroxide, two dry powders, just mix them together. Then you add 100 milliliters of water. That water will start a reaction that gets really hot. This is pretty exothermic. So you do want to be aware of that and stay away from it. Some steam is formed, some hot steam. Just be aware, eventually it'll calm down. Over some time, all of this will dissolve. It may take up to, <clears throat> excuse me, take up to 24 hours to do that though. Once you've waited until this is all dissolved, you add the rest of the water, the 800 milliliters that's written up here. So you have a total of 900 milliliters and a solution that's much less dense than this one. You needed the heat of the reaction to make this happen right here. But since the reactions happen, you need the concentration here in order to make it work. So you add that 800 milliliters of water to here. Once you've done that, you throw in your copper sulfate crystals and wait. The reaction for all of this is two NaOH sodium hydroxide plus silicone dioxide yields sodium silicate and water. I just got my cat litter in the mail, so let's get to it. To start, here's our silicon dioxide, and that is silicon, same stuff that goes into chips and electronics, not silicone, SiO2, and I got it from this bag right here. It cost me 12 bucks online, and you can see on the inside, they're just these crystals. They're uh, harmless to touch. They just absorb uh, water really well. 60 grams of silicon dioxide pre-weighed. This is our sodium hydroxide. I bought this, but you can use drain cleaner that's made of it. 30 grams of sodium hydroxide pre-weighed. 900 milliliters of distilled water. Of course, we'll be splitting this into 100 milliliters and 800 milliliters. Here are some larger copper sulfate crystals that I broke off of a string from a previous experiment. This is a simple part of the experiment, but also the slightly dangerous one because of the heat produced. So we're gonna first add our silicone dioxide. And then next, our sodium hydroxide. 
dry, these two will just stay dry, mixed together, no harm done. Now we're going to add our 100 milliliters of water here, and this is when the reaction will start, and this will get rather hot. It can produce steam and even boil, as you're seeing right there. That's harmless. Nothing dangerous being produced. That heat is what's necessary to drive this reaction forward. This could take a while, up to 24 hours to dissolve. This is about 10 minutes out and it's getting there. You can clearly see that, but uh, I may have to leave this overnight. To hopefully speed this up, I put this on the magnetic stirrer. It's been about three hours and it's almost there. It's been seven hours and this is basically done. There's a few small pieces in there that haven't quite dissolved, but they will not affect the rest of the experiment. So I'm gonna turn this off and we'll move on to the next step. Here's our sodium silicate solution we just made and the 800 milliliters of water that needs to be added to it. Very simple step, nothing special about this really. It might cloud up like you just saw right there, but let it set and it will clear up again nicely. You can see the solution is very clear at this point. I purchased a separate container here. Uh, it's about 900 milliliters, I'm guessing. This will not all fit, but I wanted something that was really clear so we could see this reaction take place when I put the copper sulfate in it. So I'm gonna put in as much as I can here. Up to about right there. We're to the final and by far the easiest step here. So I know I said to get like a centimeter, which this one is, but I also found some smaller ones I'm going to put in just for fun. So just drop these in wherever uh, you want. Kind of spread them out a little bit. Those didn't really spread out. I hope the next one goes better. Yep. Kind of funny that I'm videoing me dropping these in, but it has to be done. All right, there we go. And for the last one, I tied a piece to the top that came with this. So I'm going to put that in the center here. And we'll see how that looks as it grows. I just dropped them in. It's not been 15 minutes and look at all these sprouts, especially the little bits that happen to fall in the center. It's like a lot of little hairs coming up or something. An hour and a half in, it looks pretty good. The copper sulfate solution is less dense than the sodium silicate solution. So that's why these things grow up. It's about four hours later. It's growing very nicely. The one in the middle there is definitely sprouting mostly up. Thirteen hours later, I dropped a couple more pieces in there after it had first started, just to fill it up as much as I could. I'd say this is definitely a success. I didn't do this for this reason, but I took the top off and this stayed in pretty good shape. I took that floating piece out so I could get the bubbles off the sides and take a good look inside and what a difference. Such an interesting thing that happens. Chemistry is so cool. We tried copper sulfate and it worked well. Here are two other metal salts. One is magnesium, magnesium sulfate and the other is iron sulfate. This is how they look uh, typically when you find them in the powdered form. What I did was dissolve a bunch in water, then boil the water off so I can get large chunks of crystals. So here's the magnesium sulfate and here's the iron sulfate crystals. I'm going to break off pieces and we'll put it in the sodium silicate solution and see if they also grow. The ferric sulfate is on the right, magnesium sulfate is on the left. And here we have our sodium silicate. I'm going to drop each one of these in here. Those are magnesium sulfate. And there goes our ferric sulfate. So I don't know what's going to happen. This is a true test. We'll come back in a little bit and see if they're growing. It's been about a half hour and they both work. Look at that. It's pretty cool. So I'm going to take other chunks of these same crystals that I made and put it in the original copper sulfate to grow different colors. You know, the one on the left, uh, magnesium sulfate, is just Epsom salts. So yeah, I'm a little bit surprised. I just got done dropping in these extra crystals, both the magnesium sulfate and the ferric or iron sulfate crystals. and. Uh, We'll come back just to see how this looks in a bit. I think this is done. Look at all of these chemical growths. It's really rather beautiful. These have been running for a while now. Check out the tops. I guess once it hits the top, it just spreads out. Check out the iron sulfate. Looks like a creature.